Hey guys, so this video is going to be going over iron uptake. And just to get you uh, oriented real quick here, this is our enterocyte, which is in our small intestine, um, specifically in the duodenum over here. Um, and this is we've got a blood vessel over here where the iron is being uptaken into. Um, obviously, this isn't to scale or anything. This is just to give you an idea of what's going on when we're uptaking iron. Now, we can get our iron in two ways. We can just take it directly from other blood as in a heme group and the heme can be taken in directly through a very obviously named protein channel called a heme transporter. I'm just going to label it HT. And that'll take the heme in, and we'll have heme inside the enterocyte here. And then that will be acted upon by another enzyme called heme oxygenase. And that is going to just give us our reduced iron molecule or reduced iron atom, rather. Now, the other way that iron can enter into an enterocyte is directly as an iron atom. But the problem with this is that iron is usually transported as Fe3, the oxidized version. And this isn't actually able to enter the transporter, which is called divalent metal transporter 1, or DMT1, and the divalent being that it needs a 2+, plus rather than a 3+. Plus. So before we let DMT1 act on iron 3+, plus, we need it to be acted upon by a ferric reductase. Which changes this from iron 3+, plus to iron 2+, plus, which is then able to go through the transporter and end up right where we were with our heme. Now once we get to two, this step of uh, just iron in its reduced form floating around in an enterocyte, it has a few options. It can be stored by being bound to ferritin, so you, and this will also oxidize it in the process, so you get Fe3 plus combined with ferritin. And ferritin is the storage form of iron, and this is fine because we can, if we're low on iron, we can reversibly get our iron back from ferritin. However, if ferritin is, uh, gets acted upon by a lysosome, it can be degraded into hemosiderin, and this is a less reversible um, means of storing iron, and it, this can cause problems um, like iron overload, where you, have, you can have anything from cardiomyopathy to liver cirrhosis, diabetes, even joint disease, um, just because of this hemosiderin which I will put a big black X through because we don't want it to happen, form of storage for iron. And you don't really see hemosiderin unless you've got iron overload or some other problem with your iron metabolism. Now, if we want to just uptake iron directly into our blood, however, we can process it some more over here, but just like before, we want it back in its 3 plus state, its oxidized state, rather than its 2 plus state. So we need another set of transporters and another uh, enzyme to change it from 2 plus to 3 plus now. So it's going to go through a transporter, and that transport is called ferroportin. And alongside this ferroportin is an a enzyme called hephaestin. And Hephaestin is actually named after the Greek, Greek god Hephaestus, if you know anything about Greek gods, who is the Greek god of metalwork um, and blacksmithing for the gods. He was a pretty, pretty cool dude. Uh, but Hephaestin, after ferroportin transports Fe2 into the blood vessel, it's going to come straight out, go straight to Hephaestin, and go from Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus. And once it is in the Fe3 plus form, it can be bound now to transferrin. And transferrin, is, and this is how it's transported around in the blood. So we have Fe3 plus bound to transferrin. And this is how iron is transported through the blood connected to this molecule. And it also can be then 
connected to a ceruloplasmin as well, and that's going to help it deliver from a blood vessel to tissues throughout the tissues. So this is the entire iron uptake pathway that we've got going here. But it's important to know about not only what happens with iron overload, like I mentioned before, where you've got a storage of hemosiderin here, which can cause, again, cardiomyopathy, liver cirrhosis, bad stuff. We don't want it. But you can also have a deficiency of iron, um, and you'll have anemia symptoms. So you'll have fatigue, weakness, loss of appetite. Um, and we don't want these as, uh, either. So it's a careful balance between ha taking in too much iron and storing too much of it or not having enough of it, either because one of these receptors here is deficient or because we're simply not ingesting enough of it ourselves. And it's also important to note that we have some amount of control, not just over the storage here into ferritin to keep it from going into the blood vessel, but the liver also produces an inhibiting agent which acts on ferroportin, ferroportin, excuse me, and that's called hepcidin. And hepcidin is made by the liver specifically to block it from being taken into blood vessels so it can, can't go into the rest of your body. So this is the whole setup that we have here. I know it's kind of hard to keep all the names straight because between hephaestin and ferroportin, um, they all they sound sort of alike, and they all have somewhat similar roles. But if you're able to sort of draw out a structure like this, hopefully better than I did in terms of its artistic quality, um, you can get a good sense of how this is going on and how an iron atom can go from your small intestine into your enterocyte and then into your blood vessel or be stored as ferritin or hemosiderin in a case of iron overload. I, I know it's a little bit of a short video, but um, I hope this clears things up for you guys. My name is John Lakoski and I wish you all way more than luck.